Here we have my gaming table. This is what I play Warhammer on and also other games. I wanted something that wasn't permanently set up that I could take down and put away if necessary. Uh, you don't always need the space. This is six by four. At some point I'd like to have a nice eight by four. Uh, but underneath it, supporting it, I have uh, like a plastic patio furniture thing I got for 15 or 20 bucks. There's plastic legs that just put into it. I can completely take this whole thing down and put it away. Uh, you don't need to do this, but what I did was I had the, at the store, they'll cut it. I went with MDF, medium density fiberboard. I find it works better than plywood. Plywood can warp pretty easily. It's denser than particle board. Uh, and you can see here, I have it hinged. This is called a piano hinge. I got a four foot long one. And so I can, uh, I could fold this thing in half and just kind of slip it away in a corner. It's a lot easier to put a three foot by four foot thing away somewhere. Uh, if I want, I can have it folded in half for a smaller engagement. And then I can, like I said, put the thing away or just use the smaller table underneath if we're playing a smaller different board game or something like that. So that is the gaming surface. Next, you're going to want something to put down on your gaming table because I wanted mine to be uh, something I could put up and take down and play other games on, big board games, Twilight Imperium, something like that. I didn't want to have my whole table painted and flocked and, and everything like uh, a, a dedicated war games, miniatures games table. So here's what I started out with. This is a piece of felt I got at a fabric store for six bucks. It works fine. Uh, the nice thing about it is I got it cut a little bigger. It overhangs the edge. Gravity kind of holds it in place, and if you stretch it out, it'll kind of secure into the corners so that it'll be laying nice and flat without any wrinkles or creases. Uh, just so that you can do a side by side comparison. What we have here this is the uh, official Games Workshop battle mat. Uh, it, it's got the, uh, the nice static grass stuff on it, it's a very nice surface. It looks better, I think, than the felt does. Uh, costs about five times as much as the felt. And I haven't really um, gotten all the wrinkles out of mine yet. I do store it still in the original box. I'm sure that's part of the problem. And also maybe I could iron it or something. I don't know. I don't want to overheat the, the glue or whatever keeps the static grass on. So what I've been using are these little clips I got at an office supply store. I just hastily put this up for the video, but if I have it covering the whole table, I can pretty much get all of the, the wrinkles out of it and having it lying nice and flat. This isn't really something you, you need to go the extra for, but I had used, I'd used the felt for about 10 years and thought it was time to upgrade something to, to match my retro 80s bases. So that's what I've got there. Okay, now we've got some terrain set up. Now this isn't a layout I would use for a game. I've just sort of wanted to illustrate the various types of terrain. Um, I was kind of intimidated by terrain at first. I didn't really want to spend money on it. I'd rather spend it on armies. But what I'm going to show you is you can get some really nice looking terrain for very cheap and you don't have to do a single thing. Everything you see here set up on the table came as is. I haven't had to put any uh, sweat or work whatsoever into any of the terrain here. Uh, the table's divided up into four quadrants here. This is your cheapest type of terrain. This is stuff I found in my backyard. Depending on where you live, it's obviously going to look different. I've got some sandstone that you can make little little sandstone mounds out of. Um, you could these are all. I mean, you can just move these around, stack it however you want. You can get different rocks. These I thought looked like some cool alien vegetation. These are really just a dried up cactus that I've cut into to various bits. So you could use twigs, logs, whatever you want. Uh, and it doesn't cost you anything. Now kind of stepping up the scale here, look outside the hobby. Everything you see here came from the aquarium section at uh, PetSmart or some of the stuff I got at Walmart. Uh, there's the, the Sphinx I think is really cool. And then there's some ruins. I've got a couple sets of those to make a, a building out of. There's a bridge they make all sorts of bridges. There's different kinds of rocks you can buy, little trees. And then this is a, a fake, fake plant that you can use for a hedgerow. Uh, what I use it to do is how we play with forests 
is you make a ring and anything inside the ring is in the forest. That way it's easy to move troops in. You can move the trees out of the way and have them be in there measured two inches from the edge, that sort of thing. Obviously with the new line of sight rules in 40K, it's, it's gonna play a bit differently. Uh, now everything here is some sort of third party product. Some of it is specifically designed for miniatures war games, others is not. This hill here comes from Woodland Scenics. They make railroad stuff. Uh, just I bought it at the store just like that. Uh, then back here are some offerings from Pegasus Hobbies. Uh, they make, there's walls, fences, they make some crates, they also make some barrels. Pegasus Hobbies also makes this river. Very nice, it's modular. Uh, you can get two sets of them and have it stretch all the way across the table. Works pretty well with the, the bridge over there. And then this is a bunker. This is actually an AT43 gaming piece. The top lifts off so you can physically put a squad in the, the door comes out I saw this and thought that was a pretty neat addition and uh, so you want to look at other gaming systems I don't play AT43 but I'll happily use their bunker uh, speaking of other gaming systems this tree here comes from HeroScape there's a, a jungle set comes with little jungle bushes and trees and it's it's modular on little hex bases you can snap together and then last quadrant, this is all stuff that Games Workshop, ooh, knocked over a tree, used to make. Uh, the GW terrain now, you have to put some effort into it, but they used to make really nice looking stuff that you could just rip out of a package. Here's a hill. Uh, it's got the same type of static grass to, to match the battle mat. They've got some trees. There's like a fantasy brick wall. They've got a 40K sandbag. And then some more other walls. These all came all ready to go and then here's some some funky like a chaos ruins thing I saw this guy and couldn't resist it and then there's a, a hedgerow that they've, they've made and most of this stuff came out in I think the late 90s you might be able to still find it around at, at some gaming stores if they've got older stock on the shelves so there you have it now the next question is with the uh, the new 40k rules they say you should use 25 percent terrain so how do you figure that well I'm gonna show you that here next. So do you think this table has at least 25% terrain? Let's find out. Okay, so it looks like it's just a little bit under 25% terrain. What I do is I divide the table into quadrants and then I fill one of them up with terrain. When you get it all jam-packed full of terrain, then you know you got 25%. So that's uh, it's a look at how to make sure you've got enough terrain, but not too much to favor the hand-to-hand -hand armies, but you, you want to get enough out there so you're not favoring all the, the shooty armies. And that's for 40k. Fantasy, you're going to want less terrain. Big room to maneuver, unless you're playing some special scenario. But uh, hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching.